Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we went exploring throughout the entire region. We managed to actually kill a few golems. The ones that aren't the ethereal golems are certainly possible to kill, but those ethereal ones are... really powerful and deadly. I don't know how we're going to deal with them. That said... We also chose to help this glop find the mushrooms he needs to save his chieftain. So, the stone walls in this cavern are covered in moss and drip slime. It is a very unpleasant location, and the area reeks of decay. Evidently, something has taken up residence here. You spot several massive slugs foraging through the swamps in this room. This cave is, but a, is a paradise for these creatures. Plenty of filth and plants to eat, and dark, wet conditions to breed. Easy enough. This shouldn't be too hard, it seems. I mean, we're strong enough to survive. This cavern appears to be a paradise for giant slugs. The moist air and swampy area make for great living and breeding conditions. Unfortunately, you doubt this cave holds anything of interest to adventurers, except lots of slugs to kill. And, of course, the way to complete this quest... Okay, going to reload there. That was a stupid idea. Fortunately, these we can actually kill relatively easily. Ow, ow. Really? Web? Reserves again, and moving on. I find it interesting how Club actually manages to level up like this. Okay, that's that cleared out. Ah! Oh, look at that. Mushrooms. We don't need those. Oh, hello! Didn't see you down here. There's probably hidden cav hidden caves here somewhere. I saw that. All right, here's some herbs. Definitely always worth it to grab some herbs. The opposite bank of the underground river doesn't appear to be accessible from here. You'll have to find another way around if you want to continue your search for the mushrooms. Okay, so I guess we need to find some way across here. More mushrooms, more mushrooms. You are beginning to wonder why this cave was devoid of slugs. Obviously, it wasn't. Your footfalls have disturbed this group from their slumber. They rise up from the swamps looking for breakfast. All they see is you. Oh, that is bad! The slug breathes a stream of what you thought was acid. But when it hits you, your mind grows foggy. It must be some kind of hallucinogenic. Watch out! This is the type of slug that poisoned our chieftain. That poison is very potent. <laughs> Well, shit. 
Reloading again. And now we're back to here. Well, on the plus side, now we know something of what we're dealing with from here. Answer, of course, is nothing pleasant. Alright, let's kill these slugs. No, I didn't want to get. Hello, you came out of nowhere. Apologies, someone decided to get on the phone. Call us. Call me. Whatever. <coughs> Words. Just finish this guy, please. Thank you. Slugs are surprisingly strong. Okay. So this is the room where that happened. Alright, so we are going to fight some pretty bad stuff in here. This should help out a lot. Okay. That's one of them dead. Ow. Yeah, I'd very much like to kill that before it completely destroys us. There we go. Okay, now we'll be able to survive. Oh right, the other ones. I forgot about those. Covered in webs, I hate that. I did not want to walk. Ow, ow. survived that well enough. Mandrake and Greymold. Useful. Okay. That's pretty much as far as we can get here, it looks like, so we'll have to head in the other direction. Unless there's a hidden path in there, but we'll check that at some other point. Still, we got some valuable herbs at least. <laughs> Okay. 
Oh crap, we have another one. <coughs> okay, if you don't mind, haste bomb, please. You stay back there. Now we can deal with that. Ow. There we go, that's dead. Okay, everything's dealt with there. Healing herbs and toadstools. And it looks like this is the end of the road here, which means... Obviously... There's a hidden passage in that room we were in. It's the only possibility. But we need more health. Quick rip. You can't, the terrain is too hostile. Fine. Now we can. So, that taken care of, let's go back into that room we were in before. Way up here. Jeez. Oh, must be in here. There must be a secret pass somewhere around here. And it appears there is not. That's not the way around. The way around over here? Ooh. What about down here? Aha! This body was dragged here by some denizen of these caves. It looks like a humanoid, but it is too short and its legs are far too large to be human. It is hardly recognizable because acid and decay has removed all external features. Glup spies the body and rushes over. This must be one of my tribesmen who died hunting here. It must have been long ago. We haven't hunted here in years, and I'm certain I would have remembered if someone had died on a trip. <sighs> this body has been here many years, long before I was born, I think. I never knew this poor soul, but nonetheless he deserves a proper warrior's burial. Lup gathers the remains, says a few words over them, then places them in the water nearby. You stand in respectful silence. He turns to you and explains, Our burial ceremonies are simple. Our ancestors came here from the water. When we die, we return our bodies to them. I'm glad I could give this man the honor he has earned. Okay, then. So, there was nothing over there. Let's check to the west. Something in here, maybe? Ah! You can see the stones just beneath the surface of the water here. Looks like they extend all the way to the other side, so you should be able to cross. You'll have to be careful, they are quite slippery. That may be, but we've also used up almost all of our smell energy. So... Easy enough! know the way we can get across here. Alright, moving on. Oh crap, another one of these. Hold on. Alright, uh, now that we know about these, 
Definitely need to heal the box. <coughs> Definitely heal Fox again. Okay, another healing for Fox. Okay, there goes that one. I really don't like those things. Not at all. There we go. That's dead. Nothing in here. Moving on. Ah, crap, another one. Now, pass that, and group heal. <laughs> Diseased, wonderful. Rid of that thing. The acrid smell of decaying plant matter and slug acid that has been assailing your nose throughout these caverns is even worse here. The underground river allowed some air circulation in the rest of the cavern. Not so here. Ow. Hey, got that one dead at last. We got some spiritual herbs at least, but uh, we don't have much spell energy now. Bonnie's running out. We gotta run out and get back her spell energy again. Uh, we don't have as much as I would very much like. over here. Come on. We can go a little bit further.
were beginning to wonder if you would ever escape the putrid stench of these caves. You gasp in a breath of fresh air carried down from these waterfalls and take a moment to admire the view. A close search reveals stepping stones across this waterfall. If you fall, you would most likely be carried downstream and drowned. Life in an adventurer is never easy. Before I do, I am curious if there's anything else. Oh. Ah, I was right. There's something over here. There's absolutely nothing over here. That was a waste. Oop, that's the spot. I feel like there's going to be more in here. Alright, let's cast this anyway. I stop swivel and focus on you as you enter this cave. Slugs all around cease foraging for food and wallowing in filth to deal with the intruders. Among the beasts slithering out of the morass is one of the largest slugs you've seen yet. You draw your swords and prepare to finish your business in these caves. Okay. I chose the right point to save. Reloading. On the plus side, we now know about this, so let's just get all these things cast. Yeah, for combat. How about... Divine Host provides some distraction. Uh... Fire Blast. Okay, that's dead. Good. And that's dead. Good. I think I overprepared. Mission accomplished. And we found more healing mushrooms. Alright, somewhere around here. Glup jumps into light when he sees the mushrooms growing beneath this cave tree. He rushes up and carefully gathers a few. These are there, the Ultra Bog Shrooms. Now we just need to get them back in time. Alright, we found them. And I don't think there's anything else here, so let's just... Is there... No, there's nothing else. Let's get out of here. Bring them back to the guy, and we'll be good. There was a fair bit of exploration we did here. Actually, the spot that point ends. Is there... There is not. That really is a complete waste. Okay, either way, we've gone through everything here. Let's get out of here. Yes, the light's wearing off, but we don't really need to refresh it right now. Alright. And we're out. Now quickly, back to the chieftain. Glove can hardly restrain himself from running ahead. Pick up the pace, adventurers! Our quest is almost complete. We must give the shrooms to Shaman Brop. Shaman Brop, we found them! Speak blindly, son. What is it? Glove pants for several seconds in an attempt to catch his breath. The shrooms! We found the shrooms! To reiterate his point, he pulls out the mushrooms in question. Shaman Brup stares at the mushrooms in shock for what seems like an, an eternity. Then he snatches him up and heads towards his work table. Good work. This is just what I was looking for. I remember. 
Excellent. Shaman Brupp rushes into the back bedroom to give his now-complete brew to the Swamp Folk Chieftain. You aren't sure if you're welcome back there, so you stand awkwardly where you are. Aren't you coming? For a chieftain's quarters, this room is remarkably sparse, even by Swamp Folk standards. You don't spend long surveying this chamber. Instead, you take your first glance of Chieftain Crep. The chief of the Swamp Folk lies on a, red mat, on a reed mat. His body is covered in sweat and looks feverish. As you look, he convulses and mutters something incoherent, then thrashes to and fro. Glop, I'll need your help for this. Certainly, shaman. What do you want of me? Hold him down as I minister my antidote. The poisons will not leave his body without a struggle. Shaman Brupp pulls out a long syringe and, dri and dips it into the pot he mixed his antidote in. He carefully draws up a sickly-looking black fluid, then holds up the needle. He seems satisfied with his measurements and turns back to the patient. Glup moves over to hold the chieftain down. Glup is one of the largest swamp men you've ever you've seen, but chieftain crept to dwarfs him. Are you ready? Yes. Shaman Brupp plunges a syringe into Krep's chest and pushes the antidote into his body. Krep's body sags, and you wonder if he's unconscious. <laughs> He remains still for an eternity, but now he begins to stir. It seems he is starting to feel the antidote, and the detoxification isn't an easy process. Krep begins to thrash and convulse with all his strength. Glup hangs on for dear life, but you doubt that he can hold on. I can't hold on much longer. Hang on, his convulsions are weakening. He will soon... Krep gives a final twitch before slumping back into his bed. Glup looks relieved that he can let go, but concerned nonetheless. Is he all right? Yes, he will recover with time, but he will need lots of rest. Show our friends to their room. I will remain here to watch over them. Glup ushers you out of the room and shows you to an empty room in one of the village's huts. The sleeping mats are damp and, like everything in the village, smells like smell like a bog. It isn't one of your more pleasant nights. Hey, Fox leveled up. Nice. Sure, more defense. Can't remember how to get some of these things, but yeah, more defense. Uh, yeah, rest. You have a damp but rejuvenating rest. When you wake up, you feel very refreshed. How's Krep doing? Thanks to you, he is doing fine. He is still recovering, but you can visit him soon. He is about to return to his work, then he turns back to you. Oh yes, Glup wanted to speak with you when you woke up. Where is Glup, anyway? Come to think of it, I'm not so sure. I believe he went out fishing, but he'll be back soon. Chieftain Krep is still recovering. Perhaps later you will be able to visit him, after he is rested more. Glup must have just gotten back from his fishing trip. He is standing around the fire pit waiting for you and calls when he sees you. I didn't know you were up already. Come here, I need to speak with you. Glup embraces you. A very soggy affair. Adventurers, you have saved our chieftain and helped me redeem myself for my failures. I am forever in your debt. Regrettably, I fear that Shaman Brupp still needs me, and my duty is to stay here to help him. I fear that we must part ways, but know that you will always have a warm welcome and a place to stay here. Glup seems disappointed that he is being left behind, but smiles nonetheless. I can't travel with you. I have duties here and things to learn from Shaman Brupp. But I hope you visit soon to tell me about your exploits. Alright. Well. That appears to be... Someone yells behind you. You turn around to see Gl Grup, uh, Glup sprinting after you. He has his gears thrown over his back. It looks like he hastily grabbed his stuff to run after you. He is beaming as he approaches. He stops to catch his breath. I spoke with Shaman Brupp, and he thinks I should travel with you. He says I can learn more journeying with you than I can in class with him. If you decide you don't need me, just stop back by my hut in the northeast. I'll wait there. Oh, we still have him with us! How wonderful! That's going to be a bit of help. He is actually a help when he fights. So, uh, yeah. Okay, we did already learn about that. So, I think... 
that's going to be the end of this episode. Because we've done, we've managed to uh, save the shaman, and we've done everything here. Now, however, this is the only path we have left for us to explore and dine and deal with the go the golems. So we'll do that in the next episode. Till then, I'm Chester44. That is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.